Hi guys, Wen here, Vaping Wen. It's Wednesday and I'm just here to record a quick video blog. Um, I know I usually do my video blogs on Sunday, but this week has been particularly taxing on me. Uh, let's start off, um, I mean a new batch of stuff has come into the store. If you hop on to store.vapingwen.com, you can see some of the new stuff, uh, top caps from Move 6, some cool nano rings as well. Thank you very much for all the support so far. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. And, uh, well, I guess it's that whole uh, packing, sorting, posting out, that whole process has sort of taken up a bit of my time this week. So I didn't really have enough time to get in front of the camera to record a video or a review or anything of the sorts. But anyway, uh, I've managed to sneak away and get some time today. Uh, I'm still in my man cave, as you see. I tried recording this video outside at, in my hall because being stuck in this man cave every day uh, is really getting on my nerves. I'm cut off from um, the outside world, I'm cut off from any human contact, and man, it's starting to get to me. But enough about that, uh, let's talk about some of the gear that has come in and gone out of the Vaping One HQ. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is a new mod which I've uh, actually purchased from a local supplier. Uh, it's the same guy that uh, I bought the Fogger V4 from. And uh, this is the Lotus mod. Let's try and get that to focus. Will it focus? Ah, there you go. The Lotus mod. Now, this is a clone mod. It comes from a manufacturer which isn't that known or rather isn't that famous. I guess famous is the right word because when you're talking about clone manufacturers, you usually uh, think about names like Tobacco or H Cigar or maybe even EH Pro. Uh, but the Lotus clone, this device, comes from another company that's called HOT, H-O-T, HOT. I'm guessing they're based out of Sinjin as are all these companies. And um, just a quick look at the Lotus and it's a pretty solid piece of kit. I paid about 100 ringgit for this and 100 ringgit probably equates to about $30 US. And uh, it's a stainless steel mod. It has a brass switch at the bottom, right here. Let's see, uh, brass switch with silver plated contacts. Now we all know that silver plated contacts, uh, they work to increase the conductivity uh, of the mod itself. And I have to say that the silver plated contacts on this mod are really working very nicely. Uh, the Lotus comes with a handy hybrid connector like this one, uh, which you use together with the KFUN 3.1. Now, I'm using an authentic KFUN 3.1. This is from Swimesto. Sw 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 and uh, basically how you use this is you take off the collector tank portion of the KFUN 3.1. Uh, let me just pick it up over here. Now, this is the collector tank portion. This usually sits at the bottom of your 3.1 and that sort of collects any e-liquid which uh, floods your chamber. So with the Lotus, you take off the bottom part and in the middle, you put in the uh, provided silver plated pin. Again, this is silver plated. You slot on a little o-ring at the bottom. Let's see if can focus on that. A little o-ring right there. And that's supposed to stop the liquid from leaking up if let's say you have a flood or something of the sorts. Now with that in, you attach that to the hybrid connector here. And this hybrid connector will only work with the 3.1. It's threaded in such a way that it won't work with any other atomizers. I'm guessing that it should work fine with clone 3.1 uh, atomizers as well. Um, so once you get that, you adjust the pin a bit and you just thread this directly onto the mod. And the pin, whoa, the pin will make direct contact with the positive on top of the battery. So let's just get this assembled. No battery rattle, get it unlocked. And it's vaping very, very well. Uh, I have in here some 7030 PG based tobacco flavored liquid. And uh, for a 7030 mix, uh, running on a 0.8 ohm coil, I believe that the firing is very, very good on this mod. Now, um, 
I should have done this earlier, but uh, I didn't. So I'm just going to do this right now. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick voltage check, or rather a voltage drop check on this mod. With my trusty tankometer, I put back the 510 connector on the top. Let's just have a quick look here. Press that up. The battery is currently at about 3.9 uh, volts. Let's find an atomizer. I have an atomizer here. Let's set at about 1 ohm. So let's see what the voltage drop is like. It's reading 3.4, 3.46. So that's about, let's say, 3.46 minus, uh, minus 3.9. That's about a 0.5 ohm voltage drop with the 510 top cap. But uh, I believe that with a with the hybrid connection, the direct connection from the positive pole of the K3.1 right to the positive of the battery, you know, there are less parts there. Uh, there's no spring because this is spring-loaded. It's a spring-loaded uh, sort of connection part there. Without all those... Uh, other parts, I believe that the voltage drop goes even lower. And that's the beauty of hybrids. Uh, you get a very direct connection. So yeah, that's the Lotus clone by HOT. I got it for 100 ringgit, $30. That's the first thing to drop in the HQ. Um, the second thing to drop in the HQ. Now, I'm very excited about this thing because I've been wanting to get one of these ever since I started vaping just over a year ago. And that is the billet box. And this is a V3 billet box. Uh, it's a Pivot edition. And I'm really just absolutely head over heels happy with getting this. Uh, I picked this up uh, through a friend, brand new, uh, about two weeks ago. If you follow me on Instagram, that's www.instagram.com slash vapingwen or just vapingwen on Instagram, you will notice that I've been whoring this uh, box out quite a bit. Uh, and that's just really because I'm so excited to finally get one. Now, in this billet box, I'm just running a kato. Nothing fancy, no diver, no diver V2, no billet bridge. Although I will be picking up a billet bridge later today. Um... I really find the vape on the billet box to be something really special. Comparing it to a rebuildable, definitely get a very different vape since I'm just using a Kato. Mm, Flavor-wise, okay, no complaints about it. Vapor-wise, definitely much less than what you get on a rebuildable atomizer. And that's simply because with rebuildable atomizers, you can play with all the parameters. You want a hotter vape, you go lower ohms. You want um, bigger clouds, you adjust with the ohms again, you adjust with your materials. <clears throat> but with cartomizers, you get what you get and no complaints from me. It's simple, straightforward, no flooding, no dry hits. Uh, I need to fill out more liquid. I just fill in more liquid. When the cartomizer tastes a bit burnt or a bit bland, just swap out the cartomizers. No fuss, no worry. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to take a quick bit from my billet box. Speaking of the billet box, uh, the billet bridge, I'll be collecting that tonight from a friend. And the billet bridge, if you don't already know, it uses BBC hits, uh, Aspire BBC hits, like uh, the hits that I got with the BBC Clearomizer. Uh, how that will work in a billet box, how that will work in a submerged tank, I really don't know. Uh, then again, it's not too different from how the BDC head works in a Kiromizer tank, you know, because it sits right at the bottom too. Something like how uh, the coil is set up in, let's say, a Typhoon, where the coil is at the bottom and liquid is fed through the sides. So hopefully that will be a different taste. In terms of vapor production, I really do expect much more vapor since the BDC is a bottom dual coil head. Uh, in terms of resistance, I believe this is about 2.1 or 2.4 ohms, somewhere about that. So not too far different from the cartomizer in here. Um, in terms of flavor, yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see it later. I didn't pick up a diver or diver V2 simply because 
I've heard so many horror stories about them. I've got a, a vaping buddy who's located in Singapore, and uh, he recently picked up a billet box as well. And uh, along with the billet box, he picked up a Diver V2. And um, just yesterday or the day before, I was having a uh, conversation with him on Facebook. And he was telling me that the Diver V2 is by far one of the most difficult atomizers to coil. Um, every day, without fail, he's either getting a flooded atomizer or a dry heating atomizer. And when you're using cotton as your sort of wicking material, dry hits are never, ever, ever pleasant. They just, they are just so burnt and rank, and it just spoils your whole mood when you dry hit on cotton. So yeah, uh, I sort of avoided that. I didn't want to get caught up in the whole you know, pain of rebuilding, pain of gauging the wicking material amount. Um, breaking of ceramic cups and things like that. So I stuck to a uh, cartomizer. Tonight I'll be trying the billet bridge. That's that. Um, one last thing about the billet box, I didn't put in a J-Wrap. Uh, I recently did pick up a pack of clear J-Wraps, but after just a day or so with the J-Wrap on, it just didn't look appealing to me. It sort of reminded me of high school when we had our textbooks and we used to wrap them in a clear plastic wrap. It looked pretty bad. But I did leave the uh, protector piece on the bottom here. And that's because, you know, that's the part that I feel would be most susceptible to getting scratches. Because I always put it on a table standing upright. So yeah, that's the billet box. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Thank you, buddy, for helping me get it really has fulfilled one of my wish lists in my vaping life. <laughs> Absolutely stoked. What else has come in? I uh, received yesterday a box from Germany and this comes from xvape.de, the guys behind the Expromiser. Now the Expromiser is this atomizer right here, the same one I used to do that voltage drop test on the Lotus. And uh, the reason why they're sending me a box of stuff is not because they're sending me more expromisers, but rather they're sending me parts, things like top caps, spare tanks, uh, 510 connections, uh, and also spring brass springs, or were they copper springs, springs that go inside this section here. And uh, that's because during my previous sort of pre order group buy thingy, um, I noticed that the quality control on that small batch was quite poor. Out of five units, four were defected. Out of 10, a total of seven were defective. And that's quite uh, quite some staggering numbers of QC fails. It feels as if they picked up all the bad units and sent them all to me. It feels that way. And uh, I made my feelings quite clear to the guys over at XVIP. Uh, guys, if you're watching this, I'm sorry if I was a bit harsh in my email, but really, when I order such a small quantity and I receive so many manufacturing defects, it does reflect quite poorly on you guys since, you know, that whole German engineering part of it, it didn't seem to come true. But hats off to you. Thank you very much for responding to my feedback and for shipping up a, part, a box of spares so quickly. I will definitely uh, distribute this to the guys affected. And I'm very sure that they'll be very happy to receive these parts. Now, just one final comment to xvid.de. If you do manage to maintain the quality, the QC standard, you know, push out, mass produce is fine. As long as they adhere to uh, a standard, a good standard, and come out without any manufacturing flaws, that don't come out with problems like crooked, uh, chimneys and things like that, then I'm sure that you have a winner on your hands. Because for the price, the Expromiser, it retails at 49.90 euros and converted roughly, that goes about 210 ringgit. And for 210 ringgit, you can't really get a solid original atomizer. Sure, you can get things like the K-Fun clone or the Typhoon clone for just over 100 ringgit. Uh, but for the guys who are trying to step up their game and move on to the next level, to own original products. I believe that Expromiser is perfectly priced. It delivers good flavor. It's easy to rebuild, even easier to refill. And 
that in my books is a very good combination to have and without a doubt you no know, with the right marketing it should sell like hotcakes so yeah that's my bit on the expromiser um one more piece of gear has come in yesterday and i'm very happy to get this too um i was ecstatic to get the billet box but i'm equally as happy to get this and this is the Promete atomizer let's try and get that focused in camera is not playing ball but this is the Promete V2 it comes all the way from the Ukraine it actually uh, made a pit stop in Sabah first before my friend traded it with me and now it's in my hands and I'm absolutely loving this tank um, just a quick background on the uh, how this tank works basically it works in the same fashion as how a spheroid works and that is uh, by using filler material like that you have some filler material in there uh, they call it, go by all different names Sarah wool uh, aquarium filters things like that and basically this filler material it holds your liquid in it it suspends a liquid up there you build a coil like this and this is just a simple dripper coil you have your two ears you have your racks in the middle and uh, you know I'm just that's how it makes and this works like an auto dripper of sorts basically your wicks they go up into the filler material and the filler material feeds the wicks as they dry up so uh, in essence you are supposed to get a bit very similar to what you get on a dripper and uh, going by that logic, if you want more clouds, you go lower ohm. But uh, with the way this thing is engineered, the closer you push your coil to the air uh, air supply, the more vapor you get. The further away you push it, supposedly it's supposed to get a much harder throat hit. So I haven't really played around with all those settings yet. I just put in a coil, put in a filler material, filled it up, and started vaping away. And until now, you know, I have not stopped smiling whenever I get a bit from this. In terms of flavor, it's absolutely full flavored. It's not leaking at all. Uh, vapor production is very, very decent. I don't have it opened at uh, the wider setting because uh, bit underneath the air hole, you have a small adjustment pin very similar to what you have on the KFN Lite Plus. Uh, with that pin, you can just open up or close off the air hole as you fancy. I tried it with the settings maximum open. I didn't really like the vape on that. It was way too airy for me since I do a lot of mouth inhales. I don't do a direct lung inhale. Um, and at least I think about half open, it's perfect for me right now. Uh, so yeah, the Promete V2. Um, I'll be talking about this in more detail later on when I do a review about it. Speaking of reviews, again, it's been a while since I uploaded a review. I still need to review the Versa Genesis Hybrid. I have that outside. That is a Genesis tank made out of 316 food grade. 316, is it surgical grade? Well, it's made out of 316 stainless steel, which is the highest grade of stainless steel that you can get. It's an absolute tank it's built like a tank it vapes like a vapes like a train hits like a train um, and it's so nice um, I'll get to reviewing that pretty soon I also need to review the zero starter kit that was sent all the way from the UK thank you very much for sending that over sorry that I haven't managed to upload a video for that yet and I'll be doing that review uh, together with the Aspire Clearomizer BBC review I feel that uh, the Zero as a starter kit goes very, very well with the Aspire BDC Clearomizer. After trying the Aspire BDC Clearomizer, I would definitely recommend that over the standard fare of CE5s, maybe Nova Minis, even Kanger tanks, because the BDC Clearomizer really is a step up from what we, we started with back then. Um, it might not be as groundbreaking or as game-changing as people like P. Busado or Mark Todd have said before, but to me, it really is a step up from what's available on the market for starter kits, for disposable, reusable starter kits. As an added bonus, you know, the BDC hits, they work with the billet bridge, so definitely something special going on there. 
Um, in terms of news, uh, I managed to get on the list for a special batch of Chiyu's. I believe it's called the Chiyu Megan, and that is a 26650 version of the Chiyu. Uh, 30 pieces are going to be made specially for Malaysia, and I believe that Malaysia will be the first country in the world to receive this batch of Chiyu's. Um, shipment is expected somewhere in May, so beginning to the mid of next month. I'm really looking forward to that because that's going to be my first 26650 battery device. And um, of course, being the first uh, 30 people in the world to have it, it's going to be even more special. What else? Um, if you're a list junkie, the W Box list uh, by Wakari Design, that's that's coming up soon. Uh, I have the countdown time open. The list will open in two days, five hours and 33 minutes as of time of the recording of this video. By the time you watch it, it might have passed or it might be much closer to the, the date release. Um, let me just do a quick check on how much these boxes uh, retail for. Wapari Design. Uh, I believe that he has a new range of woods for this batch. Uh, he's also offering a gold-plated metal part option. Now let's just see. Okay, price for the mod without gold plating is 380 euros plus shipping. And if you want a gold-plated metal part, so that means the whole front section gold-plated, it's going to cost you 580 euros. I know that 400 to 600 euros does sound like a whole lot of money to pay for a mod. Personally, I don't see myself spending that much money on a mod. Uh, the billet, bo billet box costs much less than that, but the Walpari W box really is currently one of the most sought after mods on the market. Uh, it's a wood box with some beautiful, beautiful stabilized wood with uh, really out of this world sort of effects on them. You have different range of colors, different range of patterns on them. I really have no idea how it does that because I haven't been doing much research into the W box. But uh, at these prices, um, well, this basically is your chance to get it at retail. Um, from what I've seen online in both auction groups and trade groups, W boxes go for as high as a thousand US dollars a piece on the second hand market or rather on the um, aftermarket, not on retail. They get flipped up to five to six thousand ringgit a piece. And um, not not everyone can afford to pay so much money for a box mod. So you know if you have a couple of hundred euros stashed away, this is your chance to get it at retail. I believe this is gonna be the last batch of the current design. So that's even more reason to try and get on the list. Um, the list will be done on Google Docs. So Everyone has a sort of fair chance to get on the list. Heads up to you, Wapari, for uh, being fair in that sense. Of course, a cheaper alternative, but equally as hard to get, <laughs> is a local DNA mod, which is called the Champion Box. It very closely resembles the W Box without the really psychedelic, funky wood that they use. Uh, again, I'm not too sure what type of wood that the Champion Box uses, but that is also very hard to get. It comes out in batches of 20 and, uh, you know, equally hard to get, equally as desirable. A very nice made in Malaysia product. Uh, okay, so I've talked about my mods. Ah, one more thing. Um, I just got this message on Facebook. Let me just put it up. It comes from the guys at Wolf6. I actually uh, managed to get myself a pair of Kapak mods. Now, the Kapak mods are made in Malaysia. There are two or three versions. The versions that I'm getting is the Kapak Mera or the Red X, translated into English. And that's going to be made out of red copper. And the other version is the Kapak SS, which is the uh, stainless steel X mod. Uh, both are 23mm mods. They have 21 by 1 threading, which is the same threading as the Chiyu. And they are sort of a collector's item since they are also made in small batches. I believe the batches are about 30 pieces per run or 50 pieces per run. And 
for a copper mod made in Malaysia at a decent price. Um, you know, let's try it out. Let's try it out. I will be reviewing both the copper version as well as the stainless steel version on the channel. I'm looking forward to using both. Both would look great with my Typhoon GT and my Expromiser. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you uh, guys for helping me get one piece of that too. Okay, so that's about it. That pretty much wraps up my video blog today. Um, I've covered all the bases. I've been babbling on and on. Let's look at the timer. 25 minutes, 36 seconds. Way too long. You've listened to me enough. Well, it's Wednesday again. Two days to the weekend. Aren't you just looking forward to that? Well, until then, Vapon Brothers, have a good and productive week. And uh, I'll be seeing you again soon. Vapon, guys.